um, Patrick Sullivan, uh, originally from Cleveland, Ohio, spent a good part of my early career in Chicago. I've been in New York now for eight years, uh, last five, almost six with ADP. Um, had a handful of jobs, you know, one of which was working at a startup before. So uh, working at ADP is a different animal than what I had historically been used to. And um, we uh, use this stat a lot, actually, but we pay one in five uh, private sector Americans, one in six, if you include uh, government entities as well. So with that um, comes a lot of, you know, internal capability, which is able to offer to my clients, but there's also confusion. Um, everybody has a history with ADP. We've been around for 70, 70 plus years at this point. And as mentioned, we pay a whole bunch of people you know, nationally here, but internationally as well. Um, but what I offer, you know, my clients is, is that advocate, that focus. Um, so I'm looking to help increase adaptability, adaptability, unlock insights, you know, within companies within their advisor relationships and create stability within organizations. Um, <clears throat> on top of just the, the volume of people that we pay, you know, that a lot of that goes along with uh, the data that we are able to use and leverage for client base. So that uh, comes in the form of things like your jobs report, which I just saw the number come out today. Looks like we're creeping in the right direction again. Um, we have uh, won awards for HR tech around pay equity and diversity and inclusion initiatives. You know, here's some other things market in particular that, that have been useful recently for salary benchmarking, predictive over dashboards within your organizations, um, executive manager insights, employee engagement, uh, retention. There's of course the compliance aspect uh, of what I do like the uh, retirement mandates that are a new hot topic, um, as well as things like pay, uh, pay rate or pay range disclosures and applications you know, here in New York. I help with all of those basic things, but really it's about you know, unlocking potential of talent that you have and uh, attract, retain, develop, engage, recognize and reward, all things that we help clients um, do with, their employees, and really the goal being to help business owners make better business decisions. I have a lot of great products internally. I'll get into that in a second, but we also have you know award-winning uh, marketplace partners. So we recognize that um, I want ADP to be the vendor of choice for HR payroll needs, definitely across the board. But I also recognize that you know, there are specialty industries or specialty needs, things like recognition and rewards or unique uh, time tracking apps, benefits, compensation. So we've proactively partnered with all the companies that you see on this little graph here and more to um, allow for best in breed solutions, you know, all in one place, you know, play nicely in the sandbox, if you will. But when we're talking about the native products, you know, it's really my goal when I'm working with uh, my clients to uh, a phrase I use a bunch is right size and service model. Um, I work with mid-market businesses primarily, uh, but that is, runs a range of industries and frankly sizes uh, of companies from a revenue standpoint, um, all in that you know, sweet spot of you know, one to 500 employees or so. Um, and their needs vary depending on what's going on. I have you know, three, really four quick stories I'm going to run through to, to kind of talk through it. But everything from standalone services to technology solutions to managed services, which are, are outsourced HR solutions and PEO, which is a professional employer organization or co-employer. Um, there's an la additional layer of global capabilities on top of that as well. And there's definitely all sorts of uh, buckets of technology and add-ons and various levels of support, you know, each and every step up and down this chain. I'm not gonna get into the details here, but what I like to say is if you have a friend, business owner, advisor that has had a history with ADP, is, is happy, but maybe is in a different spot in, in their career in the business journey, or even uh, more so if they're not happy, maybe something has changed and they're possibly not in the right service model for where they are as an organization. Those are all great introductions for me. 
um, as well as uh, you know CPAs and brokers, advisors that are talking to their clients about what they need, not just today, but for planning their business moving forward. Again, based on some of those best practices that we can hopefully help identify. So payroll, payroll's easy. <laughs> Frankly, it's not easy, but it's, it's probably what you think about first when um, thinking of me or ADP and leaving payroll to us is really <clears throat> a lot of words on this slide, super complicated, but two quick stories. Um, working with a company that does cell phone tower maintenance. Um, relatively small company. There's not a ton of complexity around uh, their day-to-day -day job. It's really, it's really one of two or three things. There's uh, transit time, you know, the electrician going out to the site. There's like an inspection or kind of more uh, just look and maintenance um, at the site. But then there's also work on government sponsored jobs. So those are prevailing wage or union typical uh, labor in different jurisdictions. Occasionally they go up on roofs or up ladders though. So there's a height requirement there. Um, so employees typically get a base rate, 20, name a, name a wage per hour. Um, but then if they're on a prevailing wage site, they get a different rate, usually higher, you know, with uh, some added incentive for doing those jobs. If they're up, you know, two, three stories, they get another little incentive on top of that. So we have small business, you know, payroll person managing that process, not a big deal. Um, but then we start adding in the complexity of we're here in New York. So there's different prevailing wages for all of New York City. There's different prevailing wages for all of Nassau, Suffolk counties, different ones for Westchester and further upstate. Um, they do work in Connecticut and New Jersey. Each county in New Jersey has different prevailing wage rates. So when we're talking about now an employee that could work 10 jobs in a day, let alone in a week, jump in between non-prevailing wage, prevailing wage jobs, getting them paid at the right rate at the right time is a whole mess. And I won't get into the details of how I'm doing it, but it's a, it's a good conversation to have. It's definitely something that I help with. And, you know, we're saving them really two, three days of labor hours and being able to automate a lot of those tasks and uh, hopefully scaling them up so they can take on more of those jobs. Another one um, actually in, in this bucket still for payroll is a little bit on the other end. It's a, company that has received a large amount of venture capital funding, you know, over hundred million, definitely a couple billion dollar, you know, unicorn status at this, at this time, uh, two years ago, 50 employees, they're currently sitting at 200 employees with a growth goal of about 350 plus by the end of the calendar year. Um, they went from one small office, uh, West coast base to now they have employees in 25, six states, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, each with different tax jurisdictions and compliance concerns there. Uh, but they also recently made some hires in Canada. Um, they also have some contractors overseas, uh, places like Ireland, New Zealand, a few others. And um, they don't really know. You know. Just received a bunch of money trying to scale quickly. Who knows kind of what lies next, what they're doing for health benefits and administration cross country, across border. Definitely something that I, I work with as well, you know, helping those global organizations that need a partner, you know, secure, you know, best in breed, um, but it can be flexible kind of for wherever the, their company, you know, moves over the next three months, six months, definitely over the next few years. So um, it's kind of the scale, really small business, hyper local, but, uh, you know, complex payroll specific needs versus one that's kind of figuring it out, but hyper growth and, you know, a lot of things going on. So that tends to be more the case in the, the M&A space and in the, you know, hyper growth space. Um, that's definitely a client that's taken advantage of some of these, you know, added you know, tech forward uh, features as well. When we're creeping up that, that um, breadth of service stack, the next bucket is the managed services sector. Um, comprehensive services and total source are our names for the products. But uh, again, two quick stories on how I've helped clients recently. Uh, bank that I work with. Um, they're, they're an ADP client, they're a payroll client. During the pandemic, almost the entire HR department quit. Uh, heads of departments um, were employed elsewhere. A lot of changes going on, which is, is really typical. Um, so they are a technology client where their payroll person that had been doing it for 20 years uh, is no longer in the business. And they really just lost um, some of that in-house expertise 
that they were looking for uh, to retain and needed some help. Um, I actually got this, this uh, introduction through a health benefits broker that I work with, a really good partner of mine, saying open enrollment is a nightmare for me. We are scared that these people aren't going to even be offered the right benefit plans, let alone um, the money that they're losing on not having um, invoices audited, uh, timely communication with carriers, all, all sorts of works. They're a client that's self-funded. So it was something that they wanted to keep everything in house, but they literally just lost the talent and needed help you know, bringing people in the door. Um, read a recent, uh, we have some internal metrics on this, but a recent um, HR generalist position, the average time to hire in the current environment is over six months. It's actually creeping closer to nine months. So when um, this client was reaching out for some help for open enrollment that would had like a two month turnaround, not only could they not hire anybody, definitely not hire anybody cost effectively, but really needed some help from uh, us in this case to have that process run smoothly. And now we have um, maintained that proactive relationship for health benefits and for the payroll processing moving forward. One other story that I, I'd like to say, um, is another situation where it was a company that not growing quite as fast, but um, based in New York, it's actually a, a competitor, a Airbnb competitor. Um, they have properties all over the country. It's a little bit more uh, hotel style. So it's a little bit of a different business model, but they um, don't have boots on the ground to hire people in, in the, if you know anything about tax jurisdictions in places like Seattle, uh, Nashville, they, Chicago, they had kind of all of the uh, hot markets covered that they needed to have general managers, you know, property managers on board and be able to offer competitive benefits, be able to recruit, retain those people, train them up on their systems, but also not really understanding the local compliance that they were getting into. So um, came to us and made sense to go with our PEO model um, to be able to offer those Fortune 500 quality benefits, but have local um, HR expertise, you know, on site to, to help really get the most out of the technology. Um, quick stories. I think we can kind of stop sharing here and you know, we'll get to some questions here in a second. Um, but really going back to what I said off the top, I come from really small business uh, background. I, I've worked, you know, selling to mid-markets uh, clients for some time. Since I joined ADP six years ago, I understand that it's a big, complex enterprise organization with very small business, one, two employee type of um, relationships, but also, you know, Fortune 500 global, you know, enterprise clients as well. And there's a whole bunch of needs running the gamut in between. So uh, if anybody has a question on anything, employee retention, recruiting, hiring, payroll, compliance, you know, what do I do with this new mandate? Anything like that. Um, hope you'll think of me. Thank you.